Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining us for another story here at Annie Narrates. The title for today's story goes like this. Ex-fiance left me at altar 8 years ago and married my sister and went on a honeymoon with my sister instead. Now they both demand I get over this and help them raise their newborn. Before I explain what happened, here's a little backstory for context. So I, 31 female, first met Adam, 33 male, when I was 15 years old. We went to the same high school and he was dating my sister Lily, 33 female at the time. During my freshman year, Lily's junior year, a local drug dealer who had been supplying to the students at our high school was nabbed. When the police got hold of a list of all his buyers, surprise surprise, they found that Lily was one of them. Apparently, my sister had been a semi-frequent coke user. Needless to say, our very strict parents were outraged by this and shipped her off to a boarding school, one of those elite preparatory academies, upstate. The only other person who was devastated as I was by Lily's sudden departure was Adam. Being the ones left behind, we became close and formed a bond of our own, a friendship of sorts. Adam and I stayed a little in touch throughout school and college. Lily refused to come back home or see our parents after what had happened, so she and I slowly drifted apart. I met Adam again when I moved to the city for my first job after college. We started spending a lot of time together at first because we were both a bit lonely and it was nice to see a familiar face. But soon, because of the many things we had in common like hobbies, favorite foods, movies and so forth, unexpectedly or perhaps expectedly, we fell in love and began dating. I did not tell Lily about me and Adam for the longest time knowing that she would not take it well. After two years of us being together, Adam proposed. I was overjoyed. When I finally broke the news to Lily, there was a whole bunch of screaming, tears, and accusations of, I can't believe my own sister would do this to me. I tried to explain it to her, how neither of us had ever meant to hurt her, that we had just naturally been drawn together due to the circumstances, but Lily would have none of it and she stopped speaking to me entirely. Eventually, the day of my wedding arrived. Everything was perfect. My beautiful white dress. The scent of roses heavy in the air. Our honeymoon to Hawaii, which I had painstakingly planned that we were supposed to leave for right after the wedding. Our friends and family filmed the chapel. The music swelling all around us. But the most important thing was missing as I stood at the altar, waiting. It was Adam. The minutes dragged and whispers started buzzing around the pews. And then, a note that looked hastily scribbled was delivered by an usher who seemed like he wanted to be far away from whatever was going to unfold. In that note, Adam had written that he couldn't marry me because it had always been someone else, my sister. He apologized, said that they left for Hawaii and asked me to move on. I felt like my whole world had come crashing down. It wasn't just a slap in the face, it was like a nuclear bomb detonated on the altar. My perfect day, my future and my love all turned to ashes that day. The honeymoon to Hawaii, our supposed dream escape, was the final twist of the knife. A month later, Lily, tanned and glowing, finally returned home after almost 10 years of refusing to return. She and Adam, suntan and smug, announced that they had been married under a palm tree and that their love had never died in all these years. Meanwhile, I was humiliated, hurt beyond words and horrified. My sister, hating me for falling in love with her high school ex-boyfriend, had stolen my fiancé, my honeymoon and my future. To make it even worse, they moved into a house that was only a few miles away from where I lived. It sounded like the plot of a bad movie. But it was my life. So now back to the present. Eight years have passed. Eight years of anger, grief, and me recovering from Lily and Adam's betrayal and putting my life back together. Now, just when I thought I would finally escape the ghosts of the past, they have come knocking again. A few days ago, I received a call. And who was it but none other than, you guessed it, Adam and Lily, with a screaming newborn in the background and a sob story about how they desperately needed my help to raise their child. Apparently, they've decided to leave the state 
due to some legal trouble involving Adam's business. Big surprise, I was sure there was more to that, and they needed me, their conveniently single and childless sister, to take care of their kid for a bit, while they're quote unquote away. Like hell. So tell me Reddit, am I the a-hole for refusing to be their nanny, their babysitter, or their emotional punching bag, for refusing to hold that child conceived in the aftermath of my stolen life? Tell me, am I the crazy one here? First off, a huge thank you to everyone who commented on my last post. Your support, your outrage, it's been a lifeline. Some of you said that I started this whole mess first by getting together with my sister's ex-boyfriend. But I want to clarify something. Lily and Adam had barely been together for a few months when she was shipped off to boarding school. Like I said, I had never started off with the intention of getting with her ex. But mine and Adam's relationship naturally evolved to the point where we ended up together. Maybe that's still wrong, I don't know. But what I do know is that I doubt that it justifies Lily ruining my relationship of two years. All my future plans and running away with the groom on my wedding day no less. I don't know how it happened or what went on between them exactly in the time leading up to the wedding and I am not sure I want to know either. But whatever it was, it ended up doing a lot more damage to me considering mine was an adult relationship and it's much harder to live down a failed engagement that broke down on the altar no less as an adult than it is to live down a failed high school romance. Now, onto what happened. As I said, I was planning on staying firmly out of the whole Adam and Lily drama. But bright and early on Wednesday morning, I got an unexpected visitor, who was none other than Adam, looking unshaven and hiding under a raincoat. Seeing him brought back too many conflicting emotions, and I wanted to just shut the door right then in his face. But he pleaded to hear him out at the very least. So, I reluctantly let him in, and oh boy. The details that emerged were interesting, to say the least. Remember how I said that I suspected that there was more to Adam's business trouble? It turns out that he had siphoned off a significant amount of money from his company, and now the feds were hot on his tail. Lily, my wonderfully pretty sister, had married him for revenge, not his smarts. Though, let's be honest, that was always questionable at best. So, here's the twist. The legal trouble they mentioned it's not just some minor tax evasion. They are facing serious potential jail time. The kind that comes with orange jumpsuits and conjugal visits for embezzlement. And guess who was the first person Adam called, begging for help, the minute the walls started closing in? You guessed it, me. His plea? To be a guardian and a care for their screaming baby, who by the way looks suspiciously like the mailman. But that's a whole other can of worms while he and Lily skipped town with their ill-gotten gains. Let's just say my response to that wasn't exactly, aw, poor Adam. I don't know if this makes me sound unhinged, but while Adam was waiting expectantly for my response after dumping this whole sob story on me, I had the strongest urge to laugh. Now here's the thing, I have spent 8 years living in the shadows, my life hijacked by their betrayal. I avoided places they would frequent, taking different routes back home and sheltering myself from their presence and the world. But I am done. Done playing the victim. Done being their doormat. This time, I am playing chess. And they're the pawns. So I pretended to be sympathetic to everything Adam told me, and agreed to take care of the kid, Liam, while they left the state to, quote-unquote, sort out their finances. But I also made sure that I let it slip rather innocently that we, as in the family, had all wondered whether they were sure Liam was his. Stupid he was, Adam played right into my hands, spilled a few more incriminating details, and left my house intent on getting a DNA test done to confirm the child's paternity. Meanwhile, I decided to contact the feds, spill the beans about my convo with Adam that I had secretly recorded, and offered them a juicy lead. A hidden stash of cash in the beach house in Hawaii. The same damn beach house where they had stolen my honeymoon. Now... I'm not naive. I know this won't be easy. There is still a baby. Lily's potential meltdown. She could be a great A drama queen. And the possibility of Adam turning nasty. Though honestly, considering he stole millions, I am surprised he hasn't already. But here's the thing. 
I'm not afraid anymore. I faced the worst, the betrayal, the grief. This is just the final chapter, the icing on the revenge cake. And guess what? The icing might just be the DNA test results. Holy crap, you guys won't believe what has happened since the last time I posted. Buckle up for another wild ride down the crazy train that is my life. Remember that DNA test I mentioned? Yeah, it landed with the explosive force of a Molotov cocktail thrown into a family reunion. So, remember how I mentioned that the baby looked suspiciously like Mike, the mailman? It turns out that that wasn't just a funny observation fueled by sleep deprivation and copious amounts of wine. Dumb or not, Adam could be dead set on getting what he wanted. And this time, he had somehow gotten hold of Mike, or his DNA samples anyway. And it turned out, the little guy actually is Mike's son, not Adam's. Mike's. Yeah, let that sink in for a minute. Here's how it went down. Apparently, while I was busy picking up the pieces of my life after Lily and Adam's betrayal, my sister, ever the queen of drama, was having a torrid affair with the mailman. Yes, you read that right. And guess what? The timing lines up perfectly with the conception of the miracle baby, because apparently Adam had been away on a business trip around the time of the conception. So, not only did Lily steal my fiancé and my future, she also had an affair and a pregnancy plot twist fueled by said affair. Of course, the moment I saw the DNA test results, courtesy of Adam confiding in me, his only quote-unquote friend, I did what any self-respecting, revenge-fueled sister would do. I sent them straight to my family. Let's just say the email subject line, surprise, wasn't exactly clickbait. The fallout was glorious. My parents tried to remain neutral, but the disappointment in their eyes was a punch to the gut. Lily predictably went into the meltdown mode, throwing accusations, screaming that the results had been tampered with. Meanwhile, Adam, bless his fragile ego, crumbled faster than a stale croissant. He stormed out of the house, screaming about revenge, leaving Lily alone with a baby and a tooth bomb bigger than Hiroshima. It was beautiful. Pure, unadulterated schadenfreude. But the plot thickens. Because remember when I mentioned Adam's embezzlement? It turns out the missing millions weren't all hidden in that Hawaii beach house. A chunk of it, a pretty hefty chunk, was invested in Lily's business ventures. Let me clarify. Business ventures here refers to a failed yoga studio, complete with a juice bar. Lily, despite her air of boho chick entrepreneurial brilliance, was about as business savvy as a hamster attempting brain surgery. But the question remained, where did the money go? Because yoga mats and celery juice weren't exactly million dollar investments. That my friends, is where Mike the mailman comes in. It turns out he wasn't just delivering bills and flirting with housewives. He had a gambling problem, a big juicy, casino bankrupting gambling problem. And guess who was his sugar mama? Funding his high stakes poker nights and roulette sprees. Yep, you guessed it, my dear sister Lily. So not only was Adam the embezzler and Lily the cheater, she was also the unwitting enabler of a gambling addict. It was a fact that she finally came clean to my parents when it became clear that she wouldn't be able to deny the affair any longer. And where does this leave me, you ask? Well, I'm sitting pretty, sipping my revenge wine, and watching the drama unfold like a reality show I never knew I needed. Adam's facing jail time for embezzlement, Lily's drowning in debt, and facing accusations of financial mismanagement. Her house of lies crumbled, and Mike, the mailman, well, let's just say that he'd be trading in his uniform for an orange jumpsuit. As for the baby, he's still with Lily for now, safe and sound waiting for the dust to settle. And you know what? I might not have wanted to play nanny and guardian to him, but I can't help but feel a pang of something. Maybe it's responsibility. Maybe it's sympathy. Or maybe it's just the leftover maternal instinct from my fake fiancé days. Whatever it is, I'm keeping an eye on him. Who knows? Maybe in this twisted tale of betrayal and chaos, a little bit of unexpected family will bloom. So three weeks have passed. And this story has only gotten more unhinged. And it goes all the way back. Back to the good old days before the altar abandonment, the embezzlement, and the mailman baby. Remember my parents? Those seemingly upstanding pillars of the community, 
the ones who practically disowned Lily when her teenage coke addiction came to light? Well, let me tell you, their skeletons were just as dirty, if not more. It turns out, my parents, those pristine paragons of virtue, were the ones who started this whole mess. Yes, you read that right. My parents, the ones who had judged Lily so harshly, were actually the OG forbidden lovers. Apparently, back in the day, my mom and dad had a streamy affair, a clandestine romance that defied societal norms and family expectations. But here's the kicker. My dad was already married to my aunt, my mother's sister, Lily's biological mother. Yeah, you heard that right. Which made Lily and I have sisters as well as first cousins. Masquerading as siblings. When the affair came to light, messily, with tears and screaming and a hastily arranged divorce, after which my aunt had taken her own life, mom vowed to never repeat history. Years later, enter Adam, a rich boy with the same rebellious streak and penchant for cheating that my dad had in his younger years. And guess who fell head over heels in love for him? Me and my sister. History, it seems, has a nasty habit of repeating itself. Except this time, with a twist. Instead of two families imploding, it was just one, ours, fracturing into a million jagged pieces. Now, you might be wondering how I unearthed this bombshell. Well, let's just say Lily, in her post-DNA test meltdown, decided to unleash Pandora's box of secrets. It turns out, she had known all along about my parents' affair and her biological mother's death, a secret weapon she kept tucked away, waiting for the perfect moment to detonate, and detonated it. When she dropped the truth bomb on me, it felt like the ground beneath my feet had crumbled. My entire family, the one I thought I knew, was a house of cards built on lies and deceit. My dad cracked like a stale cookie, his facade of righteousness cracking under the weight of his past sins. My mom, ever the pragmatist, tried to spin it all as a youthful mistake, but the damage was done. But here's the thing, amidst the chaos and heartbreak, something unexpected happened. Lily and I started talking again, not because we suddenly became best friends or anything, but because we shared a pain, the same toxic legacy that had started this whole mess. We talked, we cried, we screamed at each other, then cried some more. It wasn't pretty, but it was honest. We pleaded back to the layers of resentment and anger and finally saw each other, not as rivals, but as two sisters, caught up in this generational mess. For the first time in years, I saw past the anger and resentment and saw my sister, the scarred little girl who witnessed her parents' implosion, the teenager who clung to drugs for escape. It wasn't easy, it still isn't, but we're talking tentatively and cautiously trying to navigate the wreckage of our family. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, we can rebuild something new from the ashes. As for Adam, he's facing the music in court. His embezzlement scheme is unraveling faster than a poorly knitted scarf. I'm not sure if he knows that I'm the one who provided a bunch of evidence against him to the feds. If he doesn't yet, I hope he does at some point, and knows that this is payback for leaving me at the altar like a coward and not even having the decency to break things off with me before running away with my sister. Next up, Mike the Mailman. Well, let's just say that he's traded in his poker chips for prison bars. The baby, little Liam, is currently in foster care, his future uncertain as his mother deals with Deborah payment plans and foreclosures. But I haven't given up on him. He's a part of our family, twisted and tangled as it may be, and I can't help but feel a connection, a responsibility. It's been two months since the big family secret came out, blowing up our world. This might be my last update while my family tries to heal from this mess. But all your comments have been therapeutic, to say the least, keeping me going throughout this whole ordeal. And I want to say a big thank you to all of you. For starters, there was Adam, our very own ambassador extraordinaire. He faced the music in court. It turns out, his charm offensive didn't work on the judge. He started down a hefty prison sentence, his dreams of Hawaiian sunsets and pina coladas replaced by fluorescent lights and prison cafeteria mystery meat. Secondly, Liam, the little mailman baby, is caught in the crossfire of our family drama. Well, guess who showed up at his foster care placement, eyes puffy and bush choked with tears? My parents. As it turns out, 
The bombshell revelation stirs something within them. A flicker of responsibility, a desperate need to connect. They file for custody, claiming that they wanted to be a family, to right the wrongs of the past. I was torn. A part of me wanted to scream at them for the mess that they had made, and covered up, and slam the door in their faces. But another part, the part that still remembered stolen cookies and bedtime stories, saw flickers of genuine remorse in their eyes. It's a tough call, Reddit. One, I haven't figured out yet. And that brings me to the truth about Liam's paternity. With mine and Lily's newfound truths, came occasions of deep talks, during one of which it came out that her fling with the mailman wasn't a one-time thing. It was something far more. A web of manipulation that was carefully planned, even if not particularly well thought out. Lily, it turned out, had truly been in love with Mike. She'd seduced and married Adam mainly for her big revenge plan against me, reconnected with him a couple of months before our wedding. But she confessed that after the initial thrill of their illicit love affair, it died as fast as it was rekindled. Within a few months of their marriage, it became evident that they had no real love for each other. In fact, their personalities clashed, and Adam had a temper, which scared her. Apparently, he had broken things around the house multiple times, and once, even left her with bruises. Around this time, Lily also started to realize that the embezzlement scheme he was getting himself into would crumble at some point, and she needed a backup plan, a safety net. Enter Mike, the mailman, with a gambling problem, easily seduced by promises of love and financial stability. They'd fallen in love, and she had continued with the affair even after their slot machine misadventures had fallen apart. The baby came as a surprise, an unwitting pawn in this twisted game. But she knew she had to keep up with the charade of its paternity with Adam, whose fraudulent activities were starting to unravel. She knew he could turn nasty, so she ended things with Mike and prepared to leave the state with Adam, playing the dutiful wife. Coming to know all of this has left me with very conflicted feelings. On the one hand, I found it cruel that she had sent feet to seduce and marry my fiancé for revenge when she had never even had any genuine feelings for him. It shattered any hope I had for a full reconciliation with Lily. But here's the thing, even in the face of this revelation, I couldn't bring myself to hate her. I guess the years of hurt and the shared legacy of family dysfunction have all left me with a profound understanding of the darkness that can lurk within even the most familiar souls. And I realized that, in a way, she'd done me a big favor, preventing me from marrying a white-collar criminal slash potential domestic abuser. After eight years of mourning the life I never got to have, I finally had my closure. Adam is nothing more now than a reminder of the naive girl I used to be. So, where does this leave us? Well, I'm not sure. I find myself caught in the middle, torn between my anger at the mess we've all created and the flicker of hope that maybe, just maybe, we could find some semblance of family in the ashes. The future feels uncertain, but for the first time in years, I feel a sense of liberation. Besides, Liam needed all the family he could get, and I couldn't turn my back on him. We were all broken, yes, but maybe, just maybe, we could mend each other, piece by piece. The dust is still settling. There are conversations to be had, apologies to be offered, and a whole lot of healing to do. But amidst the chaos, there is a glimmer of hope, a chance for forgiveness, for understanding, and for rebuilding something new from the wreckage. And that, my friends, is what I'm clinging to. This story isn't over, not by a long shot. But I'm ready to face the next chapter, the one where we pick up the pieces, rebuild the bridges, and maybe, just maybe, find a new kind of family in the most unexpected places. And that was a wrap up for today's story, thank you very much for listening. Smash that like button for me, and subscribe for more stories. Thanks again, we will be seeing you in the next one.